Hey family, welcome to the channel. We have a really exciting kind of a just debrief episode for you today. We just finished up an enrollment season and you know, the way you think about or we think about our program is kind of like college in the sense that people enroll in all different times. Maybe they make a decision and they early enroll or maybe they enroll last minute, whatever that looks like. But we do have a kind of more intense like season that we just turn up the knob to kind of do a big like last call moment because even in college there's a deadline to enroll there is and for some context this was enrollment number 33 and 34. yeah so we have been at this for a minute yeah and tried a lot of ways a lot of different ways yeah. to get people in the door help them make a decision if school of sales our program is right for them yeah absolutely so what you're about to hear is honestly one of our other swings sure. at, I mean, we're salespeople yeah. and how to, you know, try different strategies and fun yeah. events yeah. to get people in. So that's what you're about to hear. Yeah. And I don't know if this is like a, to our fault, but I know for me, I love trying new things yeah. where I think most people, they find what work and they hang out there. But I always think that there's, there's like better ways, mm -hmm. you know, there always has to be better ways, which causes us to try new things. Mm -hmm. And well, so we've definitely experienced And that. the reason that is, is because we believe so so strongly that sales skills is the thing that we're strict about. Oh yeah. And when that you're strict true. with things and that's your foundation, you can build whatever you want on top of it. You right. can have fun. You can have freedom within that strict boundary. And so we do have fun with launches. Uh -huh. We do random, you know, off the wall events right. or we try things a lot and we ended up sharing, we end up sharing it here. Yeah. And so that's what's about to go down. Yeah. These are my favorite things to hear people's like behind the curtain stuff. And I'll tell you what, we really like shot for the moon more than ever before honestly and we reached the stars like we did not reach the moon and so i'm like so excited to talk about not reaching the moon when you like really want it because it has been the biggest learning experience of my personal business life i don't know about you but me this has been the biggest learning curve and i'm just like so thankful to have had it land among the stars baby that's right so i kind of want to get a little background of like why we wanted to shoot for the moon do it this time i feel like we like know what we're capable of okay mm -hmm. we know like what we usually do we know our kind of like threshold we know like our i wouldn't call it like our standards or something mm -hmm. and which can i give some context please. to what that is yeah so guide culture school of sales it's a sales training essentially and it's broken up into quarters right so the the training is eight weeks and it's Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And each quarter, there is about 50 to 60 students yeah. that enroll. Yeah. And it's so fun for us to welcome them in. And what do we do to, like you said, turn up the knob yeah. on that last call energy? Yeah, absolutely. And this was Q3 and Q4's enrollment that enrollment. we were like, hey, let's shoot for the stars. Right. And this is what we did. But I want to talk about why we wanted to shoot yeah, for why? the stars. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so in 2020, the end of 2020, it was a four-week program and it was the first time Time ever we outsold like multiple cohorts we sold three cohorts in 120 seats like never before had we done that and the reason so many seats were filled is because it was a last call in terms of price and in terms of program we were going to go from four to eight weeks and the price was going to go up and so like everyone on the fence was like man this is my time right mm -hmm. and then early 2021 that said new program came out it was eight weeks you know all that good stuff and a hundred people came in at a brand new price and like i said we usually do about 50 so it was double and then over double two times in a row and based on that evidence it was clear that when something is going away or when something is new, like that really helps get people off the fence. Now we are people that like stay in our lane. We know what we do. We teach people sales skills. And that's, what's been so fun is to take our one message and share it in new and different ways to reach new and different people. And so when there is an opportunity, when there is something new, we are like, oh my gosh, we have to take advantage of this. That's at least my thought. Mm -hmm. Like let's take advantage of this. If there's something new, which is so rare that happens, let's really go in. And so what is new, what has been new for this particular round of enrollment, number one is honestly, I know this might sound like not silly, but just like, so what? The workbook was completely revamped. And while that might sound like, oh, like everybody has a workbook. This is not just a, just a workbook. Like this is. And so, everyone does not have a workbook. Right. Or they have like some sort of like resource. I don't know, but this is like a pivotal resource for your success 
process. Mm -hmm. And the way the information is demonstrated is so much better and it's going to help people learn it better. So like our passion of this workbook, I can't even describe to you what a big deal it has been. And then pairing the workbook with a live training experience. So for the last year, it's been a pre-recorded training and it has done so well and it's been so amazing. But the chance to really take it live is a big deal. Even the last round, the last kind of season of enrollment or the last you know year of taking the training, we didn't even teach it live. We pre-recorded it, edited it, and put it in the portal. This is going to be taught to you live. Never done before, okay? And the third thing that was new is we actually decided to change the name. Now, I thought this was freaking brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Freaking brilliant because our program has always been called Guide Culture. And when I say Guide Culture, it means so much to me personally because there's a mm-hmm. method, the Guide Method, and we believe in like the power of culture. It's and guiding what you people. Do, and guiding people. Like I could go off uh-huh. on Guide Culture, but is it clear? And it's also the name of the company. The company, right. And so, so it's like, know. we've been guide culture, like blood sisters to guide culture, but it's just not clear. Like it to the average Joe, they look at the podcast and it's like, what do you even get from that? And so I have been feeling a pull. We even tried to change it one time to 10K, 10K conversations, mm-hmm. 10K combos. And that like just didn't sit right. But we have decided to guide culture as a company, school of sales, the eight week program. Mm-hmm. To me, it is perfection. It is like <laughs> so clear. Okay. I like was so excited about it. Anyway, that in addition to one more thing we added, <laughs> okay, I'm talking about, I'm like, wow, what were we thinking? We decided to add something called prep school. We're laughing because it's like, what the heck? But like all of this came in different orders. It wasn't like, oh, this makes it. It was like, let's do that. Anyway, it just all came out in different ways and it just smushed together. And you should it. see us in the office. We were like, I had the best idea with my time with Jesus today. That's right. <laughs> like, and that's, they just that's come. what you need to wait on. Actually. Yeah. And when, one gift that we have is we take action. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, and that is one of the greatest gifts that we that yeah. we have. It also can be to our detriment to where we <clears> take <throat> action too quickly. So anyway, prep school really basically helps people get prepared for school sales. And I believe it. It's not orientation because it's different. It's so much bigger. It's so much more important. All of that good stuff. Anyway, so all of this, hopefully you're hearing is like new, 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 different, different, different. Yay, yay, yay. And all of this should equal like big, right? It should equal everyone's going to come. Everyone's mm-hmm. going to get off the fence. Like this is literally the time. Mm-hmm. And so our big shoot for the moon moment was to fill up two cohorts, mm-hmm. 33 and 34. The rest of the year. The rest of the year, each cohort with 100 people. Plus, we wanted to offer this opportunity to our graduates who are not in academy for a different price. And I would have loved to have gotten, I don't know how many like we really had the goal of, but I was like, oh my gosh, like, and that actually did go like way better than I even probably anticipated. Mm-hmm. So our goal is 200 new people plus graduates. And it did not pan out to be that way. Now, before we go over the numbers, I kind of just want to talk about really quick shooting for the moon and reaching for the stars and why this has been the most incredible, painful, hard, emotional roller coaster experience. Because what has happened is, you know, since we know like our limit, I guess you could say, or what we're capable of, it's easy to stay there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's easy to be in this place of like, this is what I always do. And so some emotions and feelings have stirred up for me. I'll speak for myself. I don't want to speak for you, but for has stirred up for me that I haven't felt in a long time feeling like frustration, overwhelm, confusion, self doubt, just like questioning everything. Whereas in the past, like in the previous launch, it was so easy. I feel like I even maybe took the pedal off the metal because it was so easy. You know, like success, we always say success doesn't. Success is the threat to success Mm -hmm. because when something goes well, there's like no reason to fix anything or even evaluate anything. Right. And so because everything has been so smooth for so long, this shooting for the stars has required me personally to really like manage myself and manage my thoughts and my stories and manage like what I make things mean and has built so much resilience in me. I've told the team like it really reminds me of moving a couch and dust coming out that I have never seen before and like having to clean it up and it has just caused me to practice managing hard failing feelings 
and do it anyway and do it better in mm-hmm. spite of. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that so far? Yeah, I think when you shoot for the moon, like, because what you're saying is reflecting on what does it feel like when you do land among the stars? Right. Or that process of like, oh, we're landing among the stars. Yeah. The feeling of even shooting for the moon in the first place is stretching because you have to all of a sudden see yourself in this, like a kind of a new reality. Like, yes, we had sold big numbers before, but it's also like you have to force yourself to reimagine imagine how something can happen yeah because maybe you want you think okay well what if I doubled my goal well what will it take to get there right is it still Instagram stories is it still you know your one post a week or does doubling your numbers mean you do have to make phone calls you do have to follow up with old clients and what's amazing about the work that is required when you shoot for the moon is it makes you so much stronger it's really no different than having a better fitness goal and you have to add weight to know where your weaknesses are absolutely so that's what we did we added weight and I think because another thing that has go. really instigated this, like, hey, I want to shoot for the moon, is we have a new vision for guide culture and school of sales. Just in case you don't know, there is a continuation program called Academy. And I think Academy and like the coaches program are probably two of the most incredible things that we do. Mm-hmm. The only way you can access Academy or the coaches program is to be a school of sales graduate. Like that is step one to anything. It just really helps us all like lay the same foundation and start from the same place. And our vision and what I'm calling, what we're calling our impossible goal is 10,000 Academy members in 10 years. Okay. So in order to get 10,000 Academy members, there has to be a major influx of school sales graduates. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you might be thinking like, okay, why 10,000 people? Like that seems like a lot. It honestly feels like impossible, but what excites us about it is really like who we have to become in order for anything like that to even remotely happen. We have to think smarter, not harder. We have to like be better. We have to do things totally differently. Like what we've been calling is like a winning strategy that we think is causing us to win, which could very well be the thing that's preventing us from doing things better. Because if it's always winning, why would we change it when in reality it's holding us back? Mm. So it's just like really causing us to think hard. And I think like this really shocked me of like, hey, this isn't how you get to 10,000 members. Mm -hmm. Like doing what you're already doing just more isn't probably it. Like Mm -hmm. you have to think better. You have to think harder. Mm -hmm. You have to do things completely out of what you've ever done before. Learn from people that you haven't learned from before. Oh my gosh. Like Mm -hmm. there's just, so anyway, uh, this kind of like has what instigated, like, let's turn it up. Let's turn Mm -hmm. it up. Let's turn it up. It's been huge. And like, I'm just so thankful. I was telling, well, I watched an Elon Musk documentary on, I think it was Netflix about SpaceX. And they compared a lot of it of SpaceX to NASA. So SpaceX is Elon Musk's SpaceX and he like self-funded everything, you know, and their goal is to get to the moon. NASA also always tried to get to the moon. But one of the biggest comparisons, and honestly, the one takeaway I got from Elon Musk in this documentary was NASA spends most of their time calculating. Lots of desks, lots of paper, lots of people with calculators. Elon Musk really creates an environment for failure. In fact, he will spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on a rocket he knows is not going to make it to the moon for the very reason of watching it fail and knowing how to fix it based on the experience. And so that's like what I have felt is like, whoa, like trying to literally reach the boom. Like we had to shoot this rocket, like knowing it might not make it. And that has just revealed so much to Mm -hmm. us. So now when it comes to failing, like failing, first of all, this has also been a huge thing is just steps to success. And that is like the biggest gap I see in people in general is that they like so emotionally I feel like attached to failure and like what they make it mean to them Mm -hmm. and just like being someone who chooses to fail like it just opens up opportunities for you to even be some a type of person that reaches the moon you know yeah I think if I were to have heard this type of episode a few years ago five years ago maybe I would have thought like failure feels so intense oh yeah it feels even so final like what even does that mean to fail and I guess I just want to give kind of a definition definition, even though we don't define failure, but in this case, it's just coming short. Yeah. Right. But I think that word, it just, it's 
so big, yeah. you know, that it's almost like I'm thinking, what even is that? Right. Because even when things go wrong, you realize, oh, that's what revealed the answer that we thought we already knew, but actually we don't. We need right. to go that way, not that way. Right. You know? So failure, like they say, rejection is actually redirection. Yeah. That's honestly what it is. Same. Yeah, exactly. And you know, that, that saying failure isn't final. It's another thing. And I guess I just would have been so scared five years ago to even try something thinking that it could have ended everything. Oh, yeah. When really, that's just very, very, very rarely the case. Yeah. Like, everything is not over. Right. Exactly. And, you know, so many people, like, they want to play, like, the business game, mm -hmm. but they don't want to lose. And I keep comparing it to any sport. Mm -hmm. Like, you would never say, I'm only going to play this football. I'm only going to be playing the NFL if I win every time. Right. You like go the to logical. the NFL knowing you will lose and knowing that it will hurt and be painful and you'll want to cry and like probably not want to play anymore, but you keep going. <clears throat> it's the same thing, you know? And so that's why I love Daily Deposit, like win, lose, the journal that you kind of track your progress and you, and you calculate, do you win or lose the day? And you get to decide what the lose means for you without making it ever reflect like how you think, like who you are. Mm -hmm. You are always worthy. You are always valuable. You are always a winner. You just, got an outcome you didn't want to get mm -hmm. and so how do you redirect you know so yeah we got some really good questions specifically about this enrollment that we want to do a part two answering because i want to get all of them like we posted a, few, uh, a couple hours ago and we got some really good ones so i want to get them all in but i do just want to go over some of the numbers that mm -hmm. we had and what they revealed to us and kind of what we're going to focus on next because we're figuring it out as we go mm -hmm. and i know for me like i have so many things like i want to focus on literally like my brain can't stop i feel like cats like okay macy you just said something but like where did they come from because i can't follow you. like i just have so many and going back to like brick by brick mentality obsessing over one thing like that's all i can do or i will do nothing you know mm -hmm. so i'm talking about the one thing i'm gonna obsess over i really like the idea of like all of us having our own like obsession because it's just when you when everyone's responsible no one's responsible so it's just helpful for everyone to kind of have their own divvied up responsibilities that they obsess over and listen what does james clear say he said Rome wasn't built in a day, but it was built one brick at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're doing. So our total revenue for this enrollment period was $261,954. We enrolled a total of 65 people. So 57 people came into cohort 33 and eight people came into cohort 34. 70 graduates enrolled in school of sales, which I am really proud of because, you know, there's a lot an academy right now and they get this included and so you know we did of course some emails for them but nothing like insanely like intense mm -hmm. i've probably had over a hundred conversations i'm sure you did so too long, yeah so this, that was like the final situation and then we're going to talk more about kind of like during the process like clicks and all that emails and do you want to say something yeah kind of want to can i talk about what that revealed i do want you to do that right yes. now is that the time yeah what did you say first the, the revenue yeah two hundred sixty-one thousand. $954. And then what did you say after that? The total number of students is 65. Okay, I wanna talk about the graduates then, because okay. that came to my mind. So one thing to consider for your program too, and one of our academy members, Dylan, just had this epiphany herself. You might think, why would you sell program to your graduates that they've already taken? Like, oh, what yeah, is the point of that, that, you know? And one- Because is, most people in this industry, they just give it to people, potentially. Yeah, potentially it's just like a you know it's passive course and you move on, there's yeah. really, not a whole lot there. One of the biggest sales principles that you can take away for your whole rest of your life right now, if you've heard nothing else, is that this sale is not the initial transaction. You are constantly selling people to honestly keep believing that what they purchased mattered yeah. and that they are worth like keep fighting for that result, right? Yeah. We teach you sales training that honestly takes a lifetime to master. It really does. And that's a really unsexy thing to say yeah. in a world that, you know, is like easy button everything. But these graduates repurchase what's going to happen live on this stage because they know and they believe in this material yeah. and they believe in themselves to go execute it and like go up a level in the spiral. And that's just really important. Yeah. And keeping people engaged in like winning their heart, honestly, as a business owner, as someone who sells something is a bigger win than like a dollar amount or anything 
anything. Oh yeah. Keeping them in what we call in the bubble. We know that they win when they're in community. Yeah. They win when they are engaged in getting better. And just when they're full, like when their spirit is full yeah. of the right content. Yeah. And so that was just a huge yeah. win. Absolutely. I think 70 of them oh my gosh. come back in. It's huge. Really, really, really big deal. A big deal. Okay, so like we said, our initial goal was 200 right. total. We had 65 total. And one thing, like one thing we really value is follow ups. Like we have a leads list. I mean, I can pull it up. It's probably five or 600 like rows of people that are leads. And man, there's just so much that I've learned from this. Like number one is like, honestly, like really making sure I'm qualifying well. A hundred percent. Okay. So it's very easy to lie to yourself. Like I'll look at the leads list. I'm like, whoa, like there's so many people here. Like, yes, like the numbers are going to shake out. Right. But if you like really go back and you know, there's notes on conversations and you know, I like know people's names I know their stories but like mm -hmm. if I really really am like are they like actually a lead is their mindset in the right place to do this are they like obsessed over like the right things or maybe not so much we all get obsessive over like things that are right or not right you know what I mean do they really like have the funds do they have the like support you know a lot of times there's women who's husbands like are out of town 90% of the time mm -hmm. and like they might not be in a season where it's right for them and have they been around long enough to even trust me and like know me and know that this program is worth it and just really being like are they qualified because a lot of our leads have been around for a long time mm -hmm. and sometimes when people have been around for a long time you would think they're really warm but in reality they were like never gonna buy in the first place and that's okay like there's nothing more that I want than for people to come and to learn but like I'm here to serve you in a very specific way. And so like, I need to know if you are like a fit in terms of all these different ways, right? So really looking at the list and be like, okay, I know there's like 600 names, but are they actually a lead? You mm -hmm. know? And if they're not really a lead for school of sales, what would they be a lead for? Is it daily deposit? Is it, you know, engaging in more of the podcast? Does a different program need to be made for them? You know, like a lower level, you know, different type of situation. And that probably is the case. So what that screamed to me is like, I don't even like to say the word funnel, but like our top funnel is not right. Like we have the middle, like we can convert somebody in our sleep. We can also like to really help someone win once they purchase and get them in academy really well, which is like where you really master the skills. But the very top, the marketing, the like getting in front of new people, the opt-ins, like that is something that we need to do much, much better. And we have some more numbers that prove that as well. Yes, and that reminds me of what I was gonna say about the cohort 33 and 34 ending around that 56 number. Yeah. If you heard what I said, I gosh, it. minutes ago was that typically with our quarterly trainings, they are about 50 to 60. Oh, yeah. So we actually got the same result as usual yeah. with what we thought was all this new stuff, right. like basically the kitchen sink of excitement yeah. and new stuff. So what happened, right? Because yeah. nothing, clearly nothing went wrong, Right. but it just wasn't as right as, as we thought. thought, right? So that's what's interesting is that what it reveals to me is that we turned the knob up on the wrong thing. Yes. Right? We turned the knob up on the converter, which, you know, our webinar conversions are above industry average. Our emails are above industry average. Everything seems to be above industry average, except for the thing, like what you're saying is, yeah. how can people who have no idea who we are yeah. come in here? Yeah. And so I guess a good takeaway, depending on what season you're in listening to this, is if you are getting the same results from harder effort, chances are you don't need to work harder at that again. That's right. You actually need to be working in a different direction or working smarter or something and probably redirection yeah. is what that tells me. Yeah, like absolutely. We got the same result. Literally. With a lot more, I mean, Macy did the last launch by herself for crying out loud because I had just had a baby. Yeah. And so it's just like, okay, and this it made, there's not like literally God, I'm telling you, there's no other way. The amount of prayer that went into this, knowing I was going to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I still can't even tell you why it went so well. That just shows you success is the threat of success. Like yeah. I have no idea. But I will say the one thing I was like, why is that happening? The one thing that started to pick up so much towards the end was people registering for the webinar, the last one, mm -hmm. okay? Which is new people, mm -hmm. new top of funnel. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, I wonder who's sharing it. Like, I think people were sharing it and I really didn't know about it, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I think like when I went back and looked, I was like, oh, like a few people shared it on their stories and a few people, you know, mm -hmm. just send this to their team. So that just proves like when more fresh people are in, mm -hmm. things just are better, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And we're just not intentional about that. Like we never have been. We obsess over selling, which is the very place you might should be depending on where you're at. A mentor told us that like, until you hit a million, like absolutely nothing should matter other than sales. That is what you obsess over. And we've been in a million for two years, three years. Yeah, there's been, yeah, a so, lot of years like there. we need to open our brain of like, hey, what other like skills need to be stacked? Because the one thing we do have is sales skills. Now like what gets stacked on top of that very strategically. And luckily, luckily everything is better when you have sales skills. I was just thinking about how like, well, one thing Brooke Castillo says is only focus on one like goal at a time in your life because whatever thing you want to change, the skills you gain from that go into the next thing. So if you like want to focus on your health and focus on your business, just focus on your health first because the discipline you gain there will go into your business, mm -hmm. right? Instead of diluting both. Instead of diluting both. And so that's what I'm like, okay, so we like have these sales skills, like that is only going to overflow into whatever we like choose mm -hmm. to focus on next. So I'm really excited about that. I mean, not that guy culture has been completely bootstrapped. I mean, there's been a lot of like, there's been a team for a long time. Know, there's been- but when I hear bootstrapped, I hear people just like did it on their own, like without major investors, you know what I mean? Okay, then great. Then like we it has. Bootstrapped. Okay, so then perfect. <laughs> so I guess my point was just that it can be bootstrapped to a million. Oh yeah, 100%. Like it, with sales skills, 100%. 100%. I mean, there's no question in my mind. Yes. Yeah. A lot of the, I don't want to say frills because it's not frills. It is necessity. Like yeah. it's more like amazing people. It's stages. It's yeah. cool stuff. But I mean, one sales get you there mm -hmm. and it's not like we would have crashed as a business without something like this. Oh yeah. Point being is that until a million, I really, oh, we've barely done marketing. Literally. It's honestly embarrassing. Yeah. But now knowing that there's a foundation, yeah. I think everyone honestly would yeah, be better absolutely. off. Absolutely. So one thing we found, we sold, we sold, sent over 60 emails in what a month and a half yeah segmented so you personally if you're opted in like you probably didn't get a 60 emails but you know different groups of people got different emails and and macy and i wrote them yes yeah give me a high five the industry <laughs> average open rate is 20 percent. ours were ranging between 50 and 80 percent that's amazing. Okay. The average click in an email is 0.1%. Ours was around 0.8%. We also learned that segmenting like gives way better rates. So we're going to, well, we and, I knew this, but like seeing the, the differences, I'm like, dang, we need to And I did more. not know what that word meant a couple years ago. So I'm just going to say segment. all- Yes. I know. Okay, your email sequence segment. I'm like, what? <laughs> it means that when you're sending an email, it can go to a specific group. Some people probably think I'm an idiot for saying that. Other people are like, oh, right. that's what that means. Yeah. Like I get to send it to a graduate versus a new person versus, right. you know, this person who has attended yeah. webinars in the past or who yeah. has never attended one in the past. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because people love to be specifically spoken to. Yeah. The power of specificity when you're selling we believe is the reason oh, yeah. this did well. Yeah. And we also say that sales skills go into email oh, yeah. from the top of the headline to the very bottom. And honestly, if I hadn't have been given those numbers today before this, I would have speculated that we like honestly could have burnt people out. Potentially, yeah. I could have made a ton of speculation. And yeah. now I know that people actually want to hear. Yeah. In you fact, know, T, she helps us with our kind of management. She's like, hey, people want to hear from y'all. And that is the greatest like thought that I could think mm -hmm. in order to have the right heart and right. Mm -hmm. and in communicating with people. Yeah. And that was just really huge for yeah. my spirit today, for Me sure. Me too. Another thing that I personally learned is I will never, I think you could say the same thing, but we will never intensely sell, like turn up the enrollment season for as long as we did. Oh. We like really started like about a month. It took us about a month of like really intensely selling. Well, the boot camp was at the end of June. Oh my gosh. And, and I, like to the we 23rd. know this, like we know time does, is not what people need. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can give my metaphor give it. for someone who just like wants yeah. to. Okay. So, you know, in a nine to five job and we see the TikToks, maybe you've seen or experienced where you get all your work done in like two hours yeah. and people are joking, talking around, uh, talking, like showing each other TikToks, whatever. So if you didn't get your work done and your boss comes up to you and they're like, oh, well, you can stay until 7 p.m. then. Come in at eight, leave at seven since yeah. you didn't get your work done. Yeah. But you're like, oh my God, now I'm actually just bored right. and I'm doing two hours of work instead of right. more. That's kind of what we did yeah. was we actually gave people more time when they to don't mess to mess around <laughs> and be thinking and 
Yeah. And you think, you might think, well, that's a very gracious thing for you to do. It's nice to give people time. Yeah. And the way that humans operate is they actually don't need more time. They need more reason yeah. to act. And that is a sales job, 100%. Yeah. And we just pro probably diluted that for sure. by giving more time. Yeah. Absolutely. But we don't want to be the boss who's like, hey, just stay at work longer. Yeah. Like, no. Because yeah. <laughs> a shorter work day probably would get more it's done. Better. Yeah, absolutely. And then another thing that we learned is, so as you, we just talked about like this goal that we have. And I think it feels like when you've, like for us, like we've hit this big milestone for a few years of over a million revenue consistently. And so you're like, okay, I've got from level zero to one. And you would think going from level like one to two is easier because zero to one is hard. People say like, zero to one kids is the hardest and then mm. one to two is like easier because you already have all the stuff and like mm. you've experienced it and you know what to do and like whatever when in reality in this world going from one to two is like harder mm -hmm. than zero to one and i've been treating it like it's easier or like it's going to be more intuitive or it's going to be obvious when in my experience, like it's been the exact opposite. It's a different skill set. And it's like forcing me to like slap myself and be like, Macy, act like a newborn baby that knows nothing. And just like, if no one told you what to do, like what would you do? And just be creative, you know? So that's been an interesting lesson for sure. But, and like I said, we're gonna come to part two with specific questions. But if there's anything you walk away with today, I just like want you to experience life in a way that you do reach for the moon, knowing very well you might not ever make it there, but you never, ever give up, ever. You never stop. You never stop laying the brick. You never stop trying to lay the brick as perfectly as you possibly can. You never stop trying to be better. You never stop focusing on people. You never stop selling. You continue to go because listen, Another thing at Burke Castillo is that life is 50-50 and it is, life is just as hard when you don't shoot for the moon because you like experience averageness and that's hard to like not push yourself. It's exhausting, honestly. But then there's another 50-50 of the people that do shoot for the moon and it's painful and it's hard and it's frustrating, but the resilience is what comes with that. Mm -hmm. And I just like want that for you so mm -hmm. bad. And I just, I keep coming back to sports and it's like, like if you hit the ball, your golf ball into the woods and you can't find it, do you say like, I'm the worst golfer? Like, this is the worst. Like my coach is the worst. My like club is the worst. Like I hate this. Or do you just go find the ball and try again? Like mm -hmm. you just go look for the ball and you do it again. That's all you do. Alex Ramosi always keeps saying like nothing matters. Like just be in the game because like you want to be better. And that has been so freeing for me of like, I'm just going to like be better and do everything I can to help people in the best way I know how to and never freaking stop. I will never stop no matter what. To the grave. What did that video said? Never surrender. Never surrender. Lions never surrender. That's right. Gosh, that video was so good. It was like a lion could be surrounded by 16 hyenas and he would never like bow down to them. Mm -hmm. He never stops until it's over. Mm -hmm. Until he is on the ground, not mm -hmm. breathing. He doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And that like literally the feelings that I was feeling felt like the 16 hyenas of like, you know, how like, who do you think you are? Like shooting for the moon. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. but it's like, no, I'm like the exact, cause experiencing life, like doing the most, and getting it your all is so much more rewarding and not hitting it is so much more rewarding than doing what you know you're capable of and hitting it every single time, mm -hmm. period. So we are obsessing. My focus is a specific opt-in that has been my baby and I want to fluff it up and really get it into the hands of people. It's called follow-up flow and I have like major vision for it and I'm so excited about it. Court is going to make it beautiful. We are obsessing over KPIs not only performance, but also production. When I say we track nothing other than money, there's very little things we track. And I'm so excited to track, because as Zig Ziglar says, if you don't aim for anything, you'll hit it every single time. So we're gonna be doing KPIs. And then also within the program itself, we are obsessing over helping people get results like quicker and easier. How can we help them mm -hmm. take, how can we take on more effort and more sacrifice so that they can have less effort and less sacrifice and win more quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we'll be doing in this like live school of sales season is really focusing on just making it as easy as possible for people to win. 100%. You got anything else? 
I just had a thought about being like grateful for sales skills, honestly. Oh gosh, yeah. I had a metaphor and I think I lost it, but just like nothing would be possible oh, without yeah. the ability to sell. Yeah. And uh, you'll hear a lot of that, right? On this podcast and yeah. on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Like you'll hear us say that because you can't like be free. Oh yeah. You can't have certainty. Like honestly, the line mentality Macy's talking about is yeah. coming from being sold. Yeah. Right? Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And so just us knowing that all this hyena stuff could be happening and yeah. not that anyone's laughing at us because oh, even no. we got a message saying like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait for this episode because it seems so flawless. Oh yeah. You know, but we're human yeah. and things happen, but to have that certainty of like, I will not surrender. Oh, yeah. We will keep serving people this way mm. and perfecting it. I know it's just really freeing. Yeah, absolutely. I want to just read off a couple questions that we're going to answer. Just oh, yeah. Like in a part two. Yeah. One said, do you wait? What's this one I wanted to see? Oh, gosh. Oh, it seemed like you were doing so well. Do you try to portray success to attract success? I'm good question. To that one. Do you portray success to attract success? Which is so such a good question. We might like, honestly dig into that. Okay, well, I like have so many thoughts about that. Because like, what is success? You know what I'm saying? Honestly. Like, that's my question to you is yeah. that. But my, just like, we'll touch on this in the next one as well. But like my first gut thought is like it is never over until it's over like until close cart day it is not over and so like someone's like oh y'all seem so poised like it seems like it's going so well like the way i truly was thinking is like this is going to work out like this is going to be great this is going to be exactly what it needs to be and deciding that is what like helped me feel success mm -hmm. but if you if i were to walk around being like man this isn't working like da, 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 i'm experiencing failure before failure is yeah your, your actions follow your thoughts oh my god so there's like, literally no point in thinking like that it's uh, actually negative of a point to be thinking yes, like that. Like I really believe, and like literally, like when I go back and look back, like I'm proud of us. Mm -hmm. Like we really did not set us up well with all these new changes. We could have definitely picked one or two to obsess over, but like a salesperson is like positive and upbeat and like fired the heck up to help people. And like, that is how I have to think and have to live and have to be in order to like get the results, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we did have success in my opinion. Oh yeah. We shot, the stars are amazing, you know, but we're gonna keep shooting for the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Part two, Part we'll two talk about these, these questions. These questions for sure. Thank you so much for listening, watching. If you want us to answer anything specifically, please message us on Instagram at the guide culture and we will see you there. Subscribe to this channel to see more content yes. about sales, leadership, motivation, and business. you'll get that. Yeah, absolutely.